Kyoto New Zealand in your bulletin today, while city slickers might be relishing the chance of seeing snow, Weather Watch says the rural community is the main target of warnings over the impending freeze in Southland. Warnings are out for serious snow and rainfall over the coming days, with farmers being urged to move stock to higher ground. The predicted southwesterly change is expected to bring snow down to sea level. In the pending bad weather, has supermarkets doing their best to keep up with the demand for snow supplies? The prospect of the polar blast has sent residents across the Lower South Island into a food buying panic, and the AA is fearing panic on the roads in the icy conditions. Snow is likely over much of the South Island and southern and central parts of the North Island, along with heavy downpours of rain. And the Māori Party has pushed the government into gambling reform. Internal Affairs Minister Chris Tremaine has announced a number of measures to be implemented. It's been described as a watered-down version of Māori Party MP T. Urudoa Flavel's gambling harm reduction bill. Mr Flavel denies it's a backdown, saying they decided to take a practical approach. We compromised, sure, there's no doubt about that, uh, but we believe that in the end it was the far better to get some gains than get absolutely nothing at all. And the Prime Minister is putting the boot into the Greens after the party's reversal on quantitative easing. The Greens have decided to ditch the proposal that would have seen the Reserve Bank issue more currency to drive down the dollar. They say there isn't enough support for it, but John Key says it shows the Greens have no credibility on economic policy. If they ever got in charge of the Treasury, goodness knows what would happen to New Zealand. At least they've seen sense when it comes to this policy and they're backing away from it. I really think it um, should urge New Zealanders to question whether they want to listen to them when it comes to economic policy because they simply just don't know what they're doing. And New Zealand's abortion rate has dropped to its lowest in nearly 20 years. The general abortion rate dropped from just over 17% per 1,000 women to 16.1%, the lowest rate since 1995. Statistics New Zealand says the figures indicate fewer women are having abortions rather than changes in the size or age structure of the population. Afghanistan's President Hamid Karzai met with NATO officials and presided at ceremonies transitioning the nation's security responsibilities to Afghan forces from the International Military Coalition. Mr Karzai says it will mean a great deal to the Afghan people. For the people of Afghanistan, this is equally and perhaps more a great day where the Afghan people will see their own children, their own young ones, pr providing protection to their lives and to their country. And Julia Gillard's time as Australian Prime Minister might be coming to an end with a powerful union boss refusing to support her. ACTU Secretary Dave Oliver won't say whether or not trade unions continue to back Ms Gillard's leadership of federal Labor. Their backing for the PM is seen as her strongest asset against supporters of Kevin Rudd. And back to New Zealand, and Labor's Leanne Dalzell has announced her intention to run for the Christchurch mayoralty. The Christchurch East MP will, re will resign from the electorate in October, forcing a by-election. She says it's been an incredibly hard decision to make. That I want to put my heart and soul into the mayoralty campaign, but also uh, to be elected in a position where I can hit the ground running. And TVNZ has pulled the rug from under Sky TV, scoring the rights to broadcast coverage of football's English Premier League to Kiwi sports fans. It's partnered with Coliseum Sports Media to outbid Sky TV to bring the Premiership back to TV One screens after a gap of many years. The deal will see Coliseum showing the entire competition online and TVNZ showing selected matches and weekly highlights on air. Sky TV shares have taken a hit as a result and dropped 32 cents. And panic has set in for avid Facebook users this morning as the website went down for 20 minutes. International hacking group Anonymous is claiming responsibility for the outage on the social media website. And finally, there is proof that a good weekend lie-in not only feels good, but it's good for your health. Researchers say sleeping longer on those days off can help slash the odds of developing type 2 diabetes. University of Sydney researchers say that insulin, which is the key to converting sugar into energy and, and stops working properly in type 2 diabetes, worked better after a weekend of lions. And that was your news for Wednesday the 19th of June. Ka kite anō.